Good morning, Wayne. Thank you very much for talking to Headlines Today TV. Good morning. Wayne, who are going to be the main contenders for the Premiership crown this season? Um, I think it's going to be the four or five sides who are normally there every year. You've got Chelsea, the holders. You've got Manchester United, Manchester City who have spent a lot of money. Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur and to a lesser extent Liverpool and Aston Villa. But you've probably got um, of those six or seven teams probably um, two or three have got a realistic chance of winning the title. They would be Chelsea, Manchester United and Manchester City in my opinion. What do you make of the race for the fourth this time around given that at least six to seven teams will be slugging out for the final Champions League spot. Um, I think it's almost as interesting as the title race itself because you've got um, Man now Manchester City have come in, they've spent so much money, they've spent nearly 100 million already this summer which has made a massive difference to the whole face of the title race and you've got Liverpool possibly having an injection of cash from China um, there's um, been a lot of talk in the media this week about the Chinese government um, plowing money into Liverpool, taking over the club and that, and possibly if that happens in the next couple of weeks and Liverpool have money to spend in this transfer window, that changes the whole ball game. Um, already Liverpool have got Steven Gerrard and Fernando Torres staying, so they could suddenly become a significant player. Tottenham also, um, they came fourth last season. They haven't bought any players yet, so apart from Sandro the Brazilian, but nevertheless they're going to be up there for fourth. Aston Villa have come close in the last few years. Um, so you've, you've also got um, Arsenal who are possibly not going to uh, challenge for the title itself. So it's, it's four or five clubs slugging it out, Everton to a lesser extent. Um, it promises to be, to be really fascinating. Wayne, how do you see the relegation scrap panning out this season? Um, you've probably got, like most seasons, you've got seven or eight clubs who aren't quite good enough um, to make it to mid-table, who aren't quite good enough to make it to the top half. If they start the season badly, then they get, can get drawn into a relegation battle. Of the three sides who have come up, Newcastle, West Brom and Blackpool, Newcastle look um, the most realistic um, team to actually stay in the Premier League because they've got ma massive support, they've got quite a strong squad, and also um, they've got you know, players who have played in the Premier League before Blackpool, I think are going to struggle because they're quite weak. Um, they don't have much money. Um, they've got a really small budget and don't have much money to spend on transfer fees and wages. West Brom are probably in between the two. They, they, they'll probably got. They will think they have got a realistic chance. Then you've got the sides who struggled last season, like Wigan and Wolves, um, who could get drawn into it. So yeah, I'd probably say maybe five, six clubs um, could get drawn into the relegation battle. One of the promoted teams tends to do really well each season. Which of the promoted teams is likely to exceed expectations this season? Um, I, I don't know about exceeding expectations, because with Newcastle, for example, they've got such huge expectations. It's a big club, massive support, 50,000 sell out every home game. Um, for them to stay out wouldn't really exceed expectations. So maybe, maybe for Blackpool, anything better than 20th, is exceeding expectations. Everyone's predicting um, they're going to get the dr they're going to go down. They're going to be too lightweight to stay up. They're not strong enough. The squad isn't strong enough. They don't have enough money. So for Blackpool to come anything better than twentieth is exceeding expectations. Maybe not in the eyes of their own sort of club, but certainly in the eyes of um, outsiders. So if Black Blackpool come nineteenth or above, then they've then they've done particularly well. How has the transfer window been for you so far? It's been very quiet so far. Um, there's not been a lot of money spent. Only Manchester City have really spent big across the whole of Europe. Even even um, in Spain, the big spenders, Real Madrid and Barcelona, have been relatively quiet. Barcelona have brought in David Villa. Um, Real Madrid have brought in a couple of players, but not to the same extent as last year when they spent something like £230 million. In In the Premier League, Manchester United have got... Uh, financial problems, the Glazers, whatever Alex Ferguson says, the Glazers aren't backing him in the transfer market. There's a lot of debt at the club. It's the same situation in Liverpool, there's a lot of debt. Um, that could change if there's a takeover. Um, Arsenal ha have money to spend. Um, I mean, my understanding is Arsenal Wenger has a 45 million transfer budget, but he's very cautious in the transfer market. Won't spend unless he has to. Um, Tottenham haven't spent yet, even though they have a bit of money. So it's Manchester City, the only ones who have spent money. If the James Milner sale goes through, it could go through the next few days. Um, they would have spent 100 million this summer. 
Um, so they're, they're sort of the lone team who are just keeping the finance market going. Apart from that, it's very quiet. Do you think the credit crunch has affected the transfer market in any way, directly or indirectly? I think it's affected it massively. Um, you, last last summer, it didn't affect it so much because there's so much money was spent in Spain that had a bit of a knock-on effect to the Premier League, although not, Premier League clubs didn't spend so much. But certainly, you know, it, it, in the UK, it's had a massive effect. Cl clubs are struggling. The amount they're spending on wages, um, some clubs 70 to 80 percent of revenue, and it's unsustainable. We saw what happened at Portsmouth. They've had massive financial problems. They've almost been wound up. They've been relegated. Um, court battle. So it's it's affecting not just the big clubs like Manchester United, Liverpool, who had very highly leveraged takeovers um, in the last five years, but also clubs um, of of a sort of lower profile. Even Chelsea, backed by Roman Abramovich, who's got a fortune of eight or nine billion pounds. Even Chelsea are not spending big in the transfer market, not like they were three or four years ago. Only Manchester City, who are backed by the sort of ruling kingdom of Abu Dhabi, and where money seems irrelevant how much they spend um, there's one story Yaya Torre who they signed for Barcelona is earning £205,000 a week which is just incredible so Manchester City are just operating to different rules to everyone else who will be the champions? Um, for me Chelsea who will be the highest goal scorer? Fernando Torres I think will be the leading scorer if he plays 27-28 games for Liverpool not even the whole 38 um, he will score at least 20 goals. Uh, who will be in the fourth spot? Um, well, I think my, for my top four, I'd go Chelsea would be first. I think Manchester City, Manchester City second, Manchester United third. I think Arsenal will be fourth. Unless Liverpool are taken over by the Chinese consortium in the next two weeks, have money to spend the last week of the transfer window, then all bets are off. But I think Arsenal have enough quality and um, a strong enough squad. They've kept Cesc Fabregas. So for me, Arsenal will be fourth at the moment. Who will win the FA Cup? Um, cup competitions in the last few years have been dominated by the big clubs. Um, last season Chelsea won it. There have been a lot of finals. So have Manchester United in the last few years. Despite you know the sort of the, the romantic attachments to the FA Cup and sort of giant killing acts etc. The big clubs are always always um, tend to tend to do the best. They tend, they're the most powerful. Um, I think Manchester City could have a good chance. They've got a really strong squad. Carling Cup. Carling Cup, once again, clubs are going to play their best sides. Um, it's got a bit more high profile in the last few years. It's not seen as so worthless as it once was. Um, I'm expecting, um, once again, the big big sides to compete for that. I'm going to go for a wild card. I'm going to go for Everton, who um, have done so well under David Moyes. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne.